Hey there, friends, it's Wendy. Welcome to the Best of series. In this series, I am re-airing some of our most popular episodes of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. These are episodes and conversations that I really think that you're going to find as relevant now as they were when we originally aired them. So my guest today for this Encore episode uh, is Jeff Lee. He's a retailer Inner Circle member and Level Up Mastermind member and alum. He's been a longtime member of both of those groups. And I think you're just going to love this conversation. It takes so much courage to step fully into our role of CEO of our small shop. In this episode, Jeff shares how he has gone from accidental entrepreneur, like many of us have, to really successfully seeing the success that we want from our store. He shares his growth journey from hobby, he had a small booth space, to 7,000 square foot um, beautiful retail business that he's running in Mount Holly, North Carolina. And he is running a profitable retail business, but it hasn't always been a linear line from there to here, to where he is now. Jeff has done it by putting his CEO hat on and digging in and doing the work. I have personally witnessed him doing it so beautifully. One thing that Jeff will share with us is that how he's made hard decisions about product lines, about branding and shifts that he's had to make, not always wanting to do it. And it's also by really including and listening to what his customers want and what they're going to buy, right? We all have to go and do that sometimes. Jeff will also share how he's turned his shop into a local destination shop. He has gone from merchandising, product lines, just the way his store feels and the lighting, everything about his shop. Jeff has mastered the feel of his store that brings in more and more customers from everywhere as they're starting to really come and make Jeff's shop, the Vintage Nest, a destination shop. And that's so important right now. Since this episode originally aired, he's also continued that growth plan and that growth profit. He's seeing more profit. He's grown his team. He's grown his profits. And he's also found some more time to fill in that lifestyle part of the lifestyle business that we all seek. And it's just been a pleasure to watch him. I know when you listen to this episode and Jeff's journey and you understand his mindset, you'll also pull so many nuggets out of here that will work for you in your shop. So I hope that you enjoy this episode. Let's get on with it. Enjoy the show. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. So here we are, friends. I have a great treat for you. I have um, a friend and client, Jeff Lee from the Vintage Nest here with us. And Jeff, welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. Oh, thank you. Great. So I invited Jeff on on today because Jeff and I have been working together for quite some time now. (laughs) Like we're like, we go way back. And Jeff has an incredible story that I think would be really helpful for other people. Part of our retail success series that we talk through and I invite retailers on is to help share the journey, uh, the ups and the downs, the good, the bad, the ugly, (laughs) the fun, the not so fun. You know, it gets, you know, there's a, there's a ride to it. So Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about the Vintage Nest, about your journey and what brings you to where you are now? Sure. Yes. Well, accidental entrepreneur, which I think a lot of us are. I just started painting furniture, mall booth type of thing. That business greatly expanded into multiple booths and multiple vendor malls. So I actually rented my first brick and mortar shop space to be a studio. I was getting kicked out of the house. My wife didn't want all the furniture on the front porch and you know, all that type of stuff. And you know, while I had the shop space, I, I just kind of opened the door saying, you know, you come in, buy furniture or whatever. 
But that was really all I, my product line really was painted furniture. That was pretty much it. A few thrifted home decor items really I thought just mainly to make the stage to furniture with. But those things started selling as well. One day a greeting card company contacted me and I bought just a small stand of greeting cards. All of a sudden customers started coming in. Oh, you're a gift shop. I didn't really think of that. I mean, I, I didn't go into this with like a real business plan. Like this is the direction. It was kind of like, we made it through the day, we paid the rent, <laughs> we move on. Um, so that began the whole purchasing of wholesale products. Small amounts, because our shop was about maybe 600 square feet of retail space and maybe 200 square feet that we squeezed in extra furniture to be painted and stuff like that. So within two years, we, were able, we had opportunity to move to Main Street. That was 1,200 square feet. And we started to expand the gifty part of our product offerings. And then two years later, we moved to our current location, which is about 7,000 square feet and still doing a lot of DIY products. Our DIY product that we sold or still sell, it really helped us gain a lot of revenue quick. I mean, as soon as my paint line put us on their website, literally people came in the store. And that was a huge part of our business for many years. Learned a very important lesson. Um, don't put all your eggs in one basket situation. <laughs> and so, Long story, I'm going to go through all the details, but that was a very low point for us when territory shifted and I lost probably 50% of my sales in that paint line in probably a matter of three months. And at that point, I honestly thought we're not going to make it. There's just no way. Um, because it was a significant number, a very significant number. So thankfully I had a group, you know, that supported me and helped me, you know, see the possibilities of what I could do. So we started the product shift probably seriously about late 17, 18. I didn't really know what I was doing. So I was buying products, they were selling, our sales were somewhat stagnant, one, two, 3% increases. And then during a the pandemic, we just had to reanalyze everything in the business. And, you know, going into the pandemic, scary as everything, you know, but that's when we decided to really just look at the numbers as Wendy preaches to us. You know, yeah, everything has to have a value. That's the hard part for me in business is the fact you have to make these choices that are <clears throat> sometimes what I call cutthroat. You know, you have to let that vendor go that you're actually friends with, you eat lunch together when they come in, you know, you have a great time at market with them, but their product just isn't the product for my market. So we had to make those hard choices and we let things go and brought in things that I never, ever thought I would sell, such as apparel. So it's been a niching down of products. And after we kind of got a product base that we, <clears throat> that seem to have some energy. Now we're in the process of refining that, making sure we have complementary products so we can get our average sales up. Um, and then weeding out every product line, all the products don't do great. You know, so the ones have slow turns, we're phasing out, trying something new in that product line or maybe bringing in a, another product line that complements that one, but still meets that customer's need. And then when we added, gift bags with a purchase, that is incredible. I mean, for us, literally, I think we probably pack it up 40% of our sales in gift bags. And people flat out tell us, we came here because we knew it would be wrapped and ready to go. <laughs> so, so that's kind of where we are now. We're in that process of really niching down into the core products that we carry. and. You know, we're weeding out the summer. That's what the whole summer is going to be is pulling out the things that are not selling. We're going to liquidate it and move on to something hopefully bigger and better. I've always had, for the first four years, I had a paint line that did extremely well. I didn't have to work hard at it. I loved it. So, you know, I painted and it was easy. We brought in a 
crazy that we brought in T-shirt line that we blew out for two or three years. They kind of did the same thing to us that happened with the paint line. You know, they were selling the boutiques and all of a sudden they were just selling to whoever had the cash. And, you know, you go down to a farmer's market and they'd be set up with the same T-shirt. So that was hugely disappointing. But, you know, you, you find the things that, then you start being very selective. You know, you go into things that, okay, they only sell to somebody in a brick and mortar. They only sell to somebody in a zip code. You find the sales reps that protect your zip code, things like that. But now I don't really have one product that, if I lost it, it, it wouldn't cause me the anxiety that, that I hadn't passed. I don't know if that's a good journey or not, but that's no, where that's, we are today. That's a great journey. So I got to unpack a bit of that because I've been with you for a lot of this journey. Yeah. We've been working together for, through a lot of this. So just so everybody understands, you went from a 600 square foot booth DIY, you know, that's where you started. And now like it is like you got a thing going on. <laughs> it is amazing, <laughs> but it, you know, it's been a, so it's 7,000 square feet. Is that right? That's where yes. we're right now, right? 7,000 square feet. Jeff is lean and mean now. That's why he said, you know, about, uh, he's, the, can we share, like, are, are things profitable right now for you? Yes. We're having, last year was our best year ever. Yeah. And as of May 31st, we were up 38% on the year. So right now we're, we're definitely on track, right? You know, obviously everything in re for us in retail depends on fourth quarter, you know, but we're on track now to have a record breaking year again. Mm -hmm. uh, we really focused heavily on Mother's Day because I felt like <clears throat> there was a lot of opportunities at Mother's Day that we weren't taking advantage of. So I considered the five weeks leading up to Mother's Day as like the Mother's Day holiday, kind of like the Thanksgiving, the Christmas time period. And we were up 61%, I think it's 61 or 62, somewhere right in there right. in those five weeks. Yeah. So I felt like our efforts for product diversity, what we brought in really made a huge impact on sales. So. That's fantastic. So a couple of things on that. So let's talk about, um, <laughs> I, I, I don't preach, by the way. I try to teach. <laughs> <laughs> I do teach. So I have seen it happen many, many times. And again, it's happened so many times that I just, you know, you've been learning the hard way. This wasn't easy. This wasn't an easy journey through all of this. No. Like you said at the very beginning that, you know, it was just like pay the rent, move on to the next one. But we, you know, we have a tendency or a lot of people have a tendency to uh, build our business around a brand, which I know you did. And I know it was devastating. Like it was a um, when Jeff says, you know, when he, to, to quote what you said, you know, it was, you know, really devastating to you when that brand started opening up territories to other people closer. There's other things that happen to brands. Brands go out of business. Brands can be jerks. <laughs> like I've seen, you know, <laughs> so when we build our business on somebody, on a product, like one specific product line, one product type, one brand, you're building your business on somebody else's back, which is, was wonderful for you for the short term. But we saw what happened, right? When you, your sales just went crazy and, you know, down and, you know, poor Jeff, I think Jeff was like, <laughs> if I can share this, Jeff was like, that's it. It's over. I'm done. We're gone. We're gone. We're out of here. We're, <laughs> it's just, I'm leaving or whatever, you know? So Jeff's been a member of my mastermind group for quite some time. And first we were in the inner circle together or my inner circle and then the mastermind group. So we've had some intimate conversations in our groups about, you know, the stress of, what do I do now? What do I do next? And I've watched you take the reins and really look at the numbers because again, as you said at the beginning, you didn't have, um, you were just winging it. I know I can say that because yeah. I know I was winging it <laughs> when I started at the very beginning. And like so many of us do, it's just, we're just seeing what, what works and what doesn't. Then this product line is making you money and we've expanded and we've opened a new store. And then that kind of goes sideways uh, for no fault of your own. Um, and again, with the t-shirt line and all the other things, but you've really taken the reins. And I, I just want to give you kudos to really listening a, to what your customers want. That's been a big thing. I mean, the gift bags alone, <laughs> the gift bags alone is like, you know, you're listening, you're watching, you're figuring that into your cost. Just so people know, I hear people that I can't afford gift bags. Well, you can so afford it if you put it into your pricing and you price for it, if it's bringing people in, but you've also 
through all of this, through like from the very beginning. So this first booth was in what year? Do you want to just share how, like what year was that you started? What year did you get kicked out of the house? Oh, <laughs> well, we st I opened my first booth in January of 2011. Right. So it's been a journey from there to So here. within like nine months, we were in a lease for that first shop space. Right. So. I started the same way, by the way, just a side note. I got kicked out of the house too. <laughs> Front porch mercantile started as like, I needed space to paint and create and do. And then people just started coming in and asking to buy the stuff, like the paint I was using. <laughs> so like, it was totally organic, totally, uh, you know, to totally accidental uh, retail entrepreneur as well too. So uh, I always laugh because I know we have that in common as well too. <laughs> but we've gone from 600 square feet to 7,000. We've done it since 2011 till 2022. So there's not, it's not been a linear line, but one thing that I've seen consistent with you and with your business is that you always have your customer, your customer first, I mean, wanting profit and wanting a business to run smoothly, but it's been, what is the customer's experience with your shop? Can you touch a little bit about your culture your thoughts on it's not just we're not just selling widgets I, and we're not just there to make money what like how have you evolved your customers experience through all of this too yeah when I was in college I worked for a upper end department store I was a sales person on the floor so I learned very quickly they provided us um Back then, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have, we didn't have the internet. Believe it or not. We're old. I know, Jeff. Me too. <laughs> so, yeah, back in the old days. Yeah. Exactly. With so we had these pages. little black. <laughs> so, yeah. We had these little black books. They talked to us about in our training. You know, you need to get your customers' information and you follow up with them. Nobody did that on the sales floor. I did it. I mean, and. And customers so appreciate it. So they would, I would have customers call the store and find out what my schedule was to come shop with me. And this is in a big store that has probably 75 sales people on the floor. So when I open a store, because all that stuff's gone away now, you don't go into a department store and there's somebody that's going to personally help you. Or they may be helping two or three people at the same time, but there's somebody there bringing stuff to the dressing room. They're doing this, they're doing that. So I just felt like that, that is not some people shop online for convenience, but people shop for their soul mm -hmm. when they go into a brick and mortar. So that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted to build displays that just they interact in, they pause, they stop merchandising that was unique. And I wanted it to have a vintage feel. We started out as the vintage nest because of painted furniture, thrifted finds, things like that. We've been really trying to cultivate vintage to mean a vintage shopping experience. Like, and people come in and they always tell us, you know, I just got lost. I mean, we can lose customers sometimes because they're just so quiet. We've talked to them and all that. You forget they're in here 45 minutes later to show up at the cash register. You know, like, this is just amazing. And that's the, that's where I, not every customer, but we do connect with, with a lot of customers in that way. So for, for me, it is the smell, the lighting, which we're in an old movie theater. So the lighting's always a slightly on the dim side, but I think it works to our advantage. It's not like going into a super center where everything is just super bright, I guess, for the security cameras. I don't know, but you know, from the layout, you, you know, I had a local SBA kind of coach person that was helping me for a while. And he was like, you need to have butt ring. You know, your customer base is women. They're going to have a bag. They're going to have this. You can't have these tight spaces. So we work really hard. It gets tight, but it, it spans right back out. So it's like you have breathing room. So I try to walk through the shop after we do reset and just see how I feel. Like, do I feel cramped or do I feel good? To me, it's all about the feeling of, of when they're in here. Now, obviously, you have to have the products that they want to purchase at the price point. So we did a lot of market study. Yes, I would love to be a high, high-end boutique and just go to market and shop all the Lux sports. That's not my market. I have to work really, really hard to find quality things that are in pretty much a working class 
area. That's who my customers are. So, you know, I think our price points are on target for, you know, our core customer base and people just enjoy it. We've gotten hair salon customers to come in. They plan, they plan a hair appointment and they plan an hour to be in our store. Exactly. And I just take that as a high compliment. That is incredible. I know that, you know, through your journey, I think that that is such a good lesson. And I hope that people take that away. If you left for a second and drifted off, <sighs> you weren't paying attention to us, come back and rewind because you want to hear what Jeff just said. I think that is how retailers are, are winning or how we're going to win. I mean, it's one of the key things to get foot traffic and get people is to be known. I know, um, can you share a little bit about what happens when um, I, I think you're very proud. I sh think you should be very proud of this. But what happens when people have out of town guests in your community? I love this part of your journey. Yeah. It's always, it always just kind of, we hear it a lot, but yeah. it still just like gives me goosebumps. People come in and they make a point of going, our family from Pittsburgh's in, and we just had to bring them. Or they've been in the past and their family members like, we got to go to that store, <laughs> Tell me, you know? And to me, I, I think for me, that's like the biggest compliment between that and we're, we're within a couple of hours in the mountains, which has beautiful little shops, small shops. And people go, I feel like I'm in the mountains shopping, yeah. you know? And that's, that's the stuff that just gives me the most energy is people enjoy coming in. I almost forget that I need to sell them something because I'm like, oh, they're having a good time. <laughs> well, that comes natural. So is that one of the things? So I know that that feels good. I I have that, I had that experience too. And I it's hard to wrap your head around that unless you're a retailer like you and I were. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's hard. So those listening out there, like they know, they understand, our listeners understand when people come in and they say that I had to bring all my friends here. Like, you know, I had to show them my favorite shop in Mount Holly. Like I just, is such a compliment, especially when they buy, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, it, creating that experience is something that you've done really well. You've curated your inventory. I love, uh, and I think that's a really good nugget for people to pay attention to that you said, I'd love to be selling all these other things, like maybe still painted furniture, whatever that might be, or high-end boutique, that's not your people. So you've really, really paid attention to your customer base and you're serving them in a way that feels good to you. Is that what sustains you during these hard crap times? Cause it's been hard. I know, I know it's been hard. We're talking about all these lovely things that are happening to your business, but how do you push through the self, like I like self doubt or hard times or those when your ceiling caves in Jeff's ceiling caved in during the pandemic. So it's pretty <laughs> fun. funny now. It wasn't funny then. Jeff's like, Oh, no, look, no. my ceilings caved in now. What else could happen? But how do you push through what sustains you and, and, gets you through these hard times, keeps you moving forward? Well, the, the hard times, I'm a processor in some ways, very squirrel-brained, squirrel like minute to minute, but like something that's kind of major like this, I have to process things. So, I mean, there's been plenty of times where I'm like, this just isn't worth it. You know, it really isn't. But I think what it is, is, is I just, I can't get it out of my system. Mm -hmm. You know, I know this is, I, I'm hundred percent sure this is what I'm supposed to do. I, I'm here. And then I think about so many people in this community. When we moved to our downtown, it was sad. Like the building we're in now looked like a bomb went off. There was everything. A lot of things were closed and I'm not tooting my horn on this because I never really think about it. But, you know, other business owners who have very successful businesses down here have told me and still tell me that, you know, they probably wouldn't look at Mount Holly because they perceived my business much more successful than what it really was, you know, because I've been here for two years or three years or whatever. So I think about those times. I think about the things that, that kept me in it for 10 years, really. And then I start really examining after my pity party after i realize it's not going well um, we're all entitled to pity parties and i know you do pity parties but we all, yes. we all have them yeah yes okay. probably more than i should but then i think i i can figure this out i have customers or people here that you know i think of all the things that are positive 
And then that's usually when I go back to my product notes. I start going, okay, this isn't selling. That's not, these are the changes I can hardcore make. I need to get back on, you know, probably let my social media slide. You know, for a long time, I was doing a lot of creative stuff, like, you know, DIY type things on the, on Facebook lives and things like that. And now I started noticing my numbers weren't quite as good. My DIY numbers weren't quite as good. But then I post about our new apparel line and it would be like thousands of people are liking or not liking, but seeing it and hundreds of likes. So, you know, just looking at those numbers, I was like, well, this is what they, they're sharing. This is what they want. So I, I started moving back in that direction. And even though even at 18 months now have been going really, really well, in the back of my mind, I'm like, when's the shoe going to drop? You know, <laughs> you know, I, I I think that th that's a great point. I think a lot of retailers think, well, wh what's the next shoe that's going to drop? I feel like that's their new question. What's the next shoe? And that's, so, I mean, it's not an unhealthy and it's an unhealthy, but you pay attention. So just to regroup what you said or, you know, rephrase that for the people to take, to take away from that is you look at the data now, you look at the metrics, you look at what's selling, you don't have to you're not just looking at the likes on Facebook for your apparel that you talked about. It reflects in your sales. So your mm -hmm. actions reflect in your sales. So, you know, yes, we're all professional pivoters now and we're also professional pity partiers too. It's okay to have our pity partners. <laughs> I heard you say maybe I do it too often, but I see you have your pity party. If I can share it so bluntly, I'll share our behind the scenes <laughs> in our mastermind. Jeff will have a pity party put it all out there, go through the mo emotions and ugh, the shoes dropping or this is happening or whatever. Then take a data look at it, like take a look at the data, take a look at the reality of the situation. And then you trust yourself to move forward in the direction that you need to. And I think that's really admirable. Yeah. Unfortunately, numbers are not my favorite thing to look at. You know, I'd rather be in the shop <laughs> building a display, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but you know, through uh, the training in the inner circle and in the mastermind group, they don't lie. Right. The numbers just don't lie. And, and, you know, sometimes facing those numbers is very difficult, uh, yeah. um, you is. know, and, and then trying to figure out where to make adjustments and, you know, and it, you know, self doubt comes into, I'm still not. I mean, I hired out all my accounting and all that type stuff. That's still, you know, I just talked to my accountant yesterday and she's, and we're going through all this stuff and I'm sitting there going, you know, I need to look that stuff up on the internet, you know, cause I, I don't really understand. I feel like I don't understand some very, very, very basics. I do understand what she's telling me I need to do or what I need to plan on doing, you know, stuff like that, but learning accounting from a standpoint of being able to take, receive the information and make the most of it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So. Well, I feel like you do an amazing job. I mean, you know, your inventory, your inventory turns, you're very good. So give yourself some credit and let's <laughs> talk about, well, let's talk about that. When you first started it, way back to the booth days to where you are now, there has been a lot of, for everybody, I mean, but for yourself, can you share how, like, what have, has, what have you done for pers like personal growth? Cause that's a whole game thing for us, like the self-doubt and all the things and trusting ourselves and trusting our gut and our head and all of the things that come with that. And being self-employed anyways is a big game, but your personal development, but you've done a lot. I mean, you have done an incredible amount of business development. I mean, I have watched you learn your numbers and I know, you know, we don't, you don't know it all, but you, you're, you're super, you're super competent now compared to where you were. And that gets intimidating to other, um, to retailers, like we're like, it's hard, right? Like what is something yeah. that's been really hard for you to learn or how do you push through it? Can you just share some advice for others listening to keep like well, the next level thing that you got to learn? There's always like the next thing you just said, I got to learn yeah. the next level for my accountant. So any advice for those trying to figure out how to step through this and not feeling competent enough, maybe? Well, to be honest with you, I, until I really got into the mastermind group, I'd probably already been in business four or five years at that point. My accounting was terrible, hmm. you know, and all the numbers. So for me, that was the first big hurdle. I, I don't really know how you can really run a successful 
retail business and not know your margins well, not know the turn rates, you know, the cost of goods and all that kind of stuff, you know, and making sure that you're, you know, we have a loyalty program, the bags, all that stuff is built in to right. our markup. You know, if you want that experience, you have to pay for it. There's, I'm not paying for it because I can't afford to. Well, so, so, you know, for me, I'm a slow learner, very slow. I mean, I'm like, man, I should have already, when we went to our first conference, in Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, mm -hmm. I still have a list of things, that, a small list now that I haven't accomplished. And that's been pre-COVID, you know? And, and I do beat myself up, well, I haven't done this or I haven't done that. But um, Can I just interject? We've been dealing with yeah. the pandemic, so stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, we put those lists together thinking there was no, you know, who would have thought that would be, you know, so in, at, at, that, at that conference, we put all that stuff together, but... Hello, <laughs> there was a worldwide but, pandemic that hit that you thrived through, just FYI. But anyway, carry on. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing for me, I'm learning and I, I'm taking, you know, we're going to the next level and that's a whole nother all of what. So you just have to give yourself some grace. That's why I had to, you know, I need to learn these two little small things because I can't figure this out. I can't figure out the next thing. So that's kind of what I've been working on. For me, it was making sure I had the margins is really what I've been working on. And I have raised my margins. I wanted to go up 10% from where I was. I'm about at eight, right around 8% now. So I still have a little bit of work to get there, but you know, it is better than being where I was. <laughs> eight, eight percentage points actually makes a big difference in your bank account, <laughs> just by, well, by the way. <laughs> so many, I, that's huge, right? 1% makes a difference. So I think people... Yes. I think retailers, you know, they want to, so they're listening to you talk about the experience that you're giving and the knowing your customer and understanding the inventory and all that kind of, you know, all that beautiful stuff, all that merchandising that you do, all space planning. And I mean, a lot of us love that. That part is like the fun yeah. part. It's still challenging, but it's fun. It's more of the creative side. It's more of the interesting stuff. But we can't have one without the other, right? And I've seen that, like, you wouldn't be able to know what it is that you can carry at the right price point for the right people if you weren't paying attention to those margins. I think you would be, I, I don't think any of us would be uh, in business as long as you've been in business, as thriving as well. I mean, we're seeing paychecks now like that we weren't seeing, you know, we're seeing profit that we weren't seeing um, when we're just winging it, right? Because we are paying attention to those numbers. And it's a learned thing for all of us. We're all learning. <laughs> new level, new devil, right? There's all new problems, exactly. there's new things to learn. <laughs> there's new, there's new things. And it's been, you know, it's been a it's been a, a joy watching you learn new things, <laughs> even through the pity parties, Jeff. So it's okay. <laughs> so no, but it's been a joy. It's very inspiring to see that you are providing what your town needs, you know, I'm a big believer that our communities need us for those nostalgic things you're talking about for those moments of, I mean, good gosh, you just said people shop for, for their soul. That's why they shop. That is like brilliant. People need that. If we're not paying attention to our numbers and we're not paying attention to the inventory, we're not paying attention. If we're building on somebody else's brand, all of these things you've been sharing with us, we're not there to provide that. And then it's a world of Walmarts, right? So, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I really admire all the work that you've done. Can we just touch a little bit? One more thing, one more, I know I kind of honor your time and I could talk to you forever about this, but one of the things, uh, and this is, I'm going to throw this at you. One of the things that I also admire from what you've been doing, and, and that I think other retailers can understand is we have a tendency as well to let our personal life or our business overtake everything. And I've been watching you make some big aha moments you know, we go yeah. through series of sort of reclaiming that. And can you just talk a little bit on, or maybe give some advice on business can't be the everything, even during a pandemic, even during maybe a recession that's coming or whatever. Like, can you, can you speak a little bit to that and why that's important for all of us? Definitely. I, I'm, I can be a workaholic. Yeah. I only live eight minutes from the shop. Mm -hmm. Well, right now I don't, but, um, <laughs> you know, but there's, <clears throat> I'm seeing some big things coming, you know, down the pipe where our house is on a reno, which is taking a lot of time away from the store. I have a grandbaby coming. I have a wedding coming up for one of my daughters. And 
you know, I'm sitting here looking at the way I run my business currently. I'm not going to be able to enjoy all these things to the maximum. So, and that brings me to the new devil, which is being a manager type of manager role, like getting this work that I do. And my, at one time was just one person. It's easy to manage that. I have a fantastic person. But now we've added three more staff members, getting three more people that, you know, it's a job. And that's what I have to realize. It's a job for them. You know, they love the store, but they're not invested in it. Now, my first person, she's very invested. She, you know, she, she wants to be a co-owner type of, you know, that's how she treats her job. So managing people is huge, but that's the only way, one, I'm going to grow the store and I'm going to be able to have the time that I need to be away from the store. Because I have let the store impact my health. I've let the store impact my schedule. Like, oh, we can't go on that trip because of the store. And that stuff has, you have to get to a point. I mean, there's that grinded out time in business. And you shouldn't feel bad about that time. Because there's just a time when, you know, if you're bootstrapping like I did, (laughs) there's times you have to grind it out. But there has to be an end in sight. And that's where I did not have an end in sight. So now I walk every morning instead of coming in at seven. You know, I walk. I, um, I'm scheduling time off for me. Not as much as I need to, but I, I've taken those small steps. It's kind of like accounting. I'm working on these two things, so I'm working on these two or three things yeah. now. But to enjoy life and to be the person you need to be when the stores open, you have to have time to do the things you love, whether it's a hobby that you know. I'm bad about everything I make for enjoyment. I try to turn into money. Yeah. So I've been trying to back off of that, you know, and do the things I love for me yeah. or for gifts, but not to bring to the store to sell and sit for an hour trying to figure out how to um, monetize this. Monetize, this monetize well. that. Yeah, no, I, I, that's such a, that's such a classic shop owner's <laughs> mindset. It's like, how can I monetize this time and this thing I'm doing right now? So, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I've, I'm now to the point, I don't feel guilty about not being at the shop. And that was hard for me. That's a big one. Sorry, I just hit my microphone because I'm so excited because that has been a big shift for you. I'm, I'm very proud yeah. of you. <laughs> and it is all about a mindset. And I don't really know. I've always just had to work hard all my life, you know, just to get through college. I worked full time and went to school full time and enjoyed the experience. <laughs> I don't know how I made it through those years. But that's not the way it has to be. I mean, these businesses are, you know, you can do something you love, but you can't do it too much. And that's where, that's, that's the part I'm in now is balancing that life schedule better, the importance of it. I'm much happier now coming in here, working only maybe nine hours in a day, (laughs) taking every Sunday off. Mm -hmm. Lately, I've been taking every Monday off because the store's closed. That I'm more productive. Sometimes I I would get in a situation where I think the more I work, the better it's going to be. But my productivity started to decrease so greatly that I was here, but really 50% here right. mentally. You well, know. you're so stressed out at that point and you're tired and cranky and resent. It gets resentful. I mean, we've all gone right. through periods of resentment of our business. Um, hustle and grind is not the way to grow a business. I do love that you put that little caveat on there that there's times where we have to hustle and grind when we're bootstrapping at the beginning, but you can't go to that next level. Right. And you're definitely an example of that. We cannot grow and thrive in hustle and grind mode 24 seven. Like we just can't, we can't be thinking about our business all the time. We need that white space. If anything, we need to make sure we stay healthy. I mean, I teach a lot. I try not to preach, but I teach a lot about mm-hmm. the golden egg. We, and I know that we've had these conversations. We, if we fail, our business fails. If our brain is not on it, and it, in order for our brain to be healthy, our body needs to be healthy. We need to walk. We need to do things. I know, like I'm with, I'm like Jeff. I'm trying really hard to like keep healthy, but so that I can keep serving and so I can keep loving my business, so that you can keep. You know, we need to keep your store in business, not because 
you know, not just because to pay the bills and uh, the grind, but because it's, it's part of your soul. I mean, I know that it's part of your client's soul or you love to fill their soul when you bring them in, but your community, what you're doing for your community, what you're doing for your customers, what you're doing for yourself and your family. It's beautiful. I mean, and we got to, it's our responsibility, I think, as the CEO, as the, as the leader and the visionary to take care of ourselves. So I'm very proud of you for switching that mindset and Really, I've, I've been seeing you take care of your, you know, your health and your well-being. Well-being is important, right? We can't thrive yes. if we have a poor well-being. So, so and, thank and you for sharing that. Go ahead. Yeah. I just want to say one other thing. And, yeah. you know, and, and you're always reminding us that we need staff. You know, I mean, obviously it has to make sense in the numbers. And I always had a very difficult time turning things over to staff. But you, I can't remember, I'm sure... It was you or maybe somebody on a on a, one of the teachings was talking about a team always beats a solo. Yeah. Something every to time. Fact. Yeah. Every time. And I keep every putting time. that. And is the and I'm crazy because I only get like a phrase of something. Like I can listen to something for an hour. I got that phrase. I can't even tell you what we're talking about. <laughs> but that just runs through my mind. I'm like, I, I can't, I have maxed out a while ago what I can do. Right. So the, the new devil is the mindset of, yes, I can train people to do it the way, the vintage nest way. I right. can trust them and I can take time away from customer service because I love it, that part. Yeah. And it's trusting ourselves about, it's trusting ourselves that we can do, we can train other people. So yes, you're right. right. A team, you cannot grow. There is no, uh, I, I'm laughing because I do remember when you pulled that out, I was like, we had a whole meeting about this and Jeff came out with one line, <laughs> it's like, it's like, but that's okay. As long as it's been making you take action to things, but our, you know, basically that takeaway and, and, and we'll leave that with, with our listeners. The takeaway is, you know, you cannot grow by yourself. Like it's just, you can't, it's like, Nobody lives in a silo. You need people around you to even your other staff members to help you with ideas in your shop. It's very arrogant of us to think we can do it all by ourselves, right? It is really arrogant. And when we think of it that way, I always get kind of like, whatever, but it's true, right? So in order for us to grow and thrive, there has to be other people. So we can't go alone. So you're right. That's a, that's a really great way to, to wrap up. Um, what's next for Jeff and the Vintage Nest? Anything you want to share? Anything exciting happening? I'm throwing this at you, but anything exciting <laughs> What are you looking well, forward to? Well, we're already starting to prepare for Christmas. So we're looking forward to having a very large fourth quarter. And I know all the economic indicators aren't really putting fairy dust on the fourth quarter at this kind of point in time. But I do feel like we're going to be over the top prepared. I think it's going to be the shop experience I've always wanted for the holidays and just could never achieve. So we're starting now. We're already well resetting, <laughs> resetting the floor, not yeah. with holiday items, but already getting the things in place that it's not going to be, oh, we got to move the whole floor. We got to do this, got to do that. So that's our next big thing. I mean, summer's quiet for us. So we'll be working on trying to get our social, what's so crazy about the growth is our social media has probably been the least it's been ever, mainly like, because I've been so tied up on the house. Yeah. And, but you've done so much long-tail like reputation building. I want to just, let's just throw that out there. There's another teaching point here for everybody. You have the reputation you've been building. So what that you're not on social media every day? I know you, that eats you. <laughs> it's like Jeff like, yeah. it's like obsesses with the fact he's like, I should be on social media more. And I'm like, are customers coming in and buying things? And are you having like really profitable days? Well, yes. Okay. Well, you're reaping the rewards of all those years of social media. So it's okay. So here's your yeah. permission slip to just, you know, be okay. It's, I mean, yes, you want to keep it active, but it's not the be all. And we'll, we could do a whole other podcast, I guess, yeah. about that. But you're building this long tail reputation. You're doing the things internally in the store. You're teaching your staff how to, the culture of your business and how you do business. You're teaching, you're doing all the other things. So kudos to you and so what about the so what about the Facebook I also want to do a quick just a little like last minute kind of funny story but you told me one time I was crazy and when we one of the very very first 
oh my gosh, like 2017, I think 18, I th- 17, maybe I did a holiday boot camp for my fellow friends who were <laughs> retailers. I don't know if you remember. And I, it was in August and everybody was like, planning for the holidays here now. I don't want to talk about what I'm going to do for promotions in August, but <laughs> it's like, was kind of like those seeds that we were planning for. Like, we have to start planning ahead. And now I'm so very proud of you. Like, look at this. You've got all your inventory bought. Now you're doing everything. You're merchandising in June for your holiday. Uh, and I know you're setting yourself up and you've been getting better and better at it every year. So kudos to you for holiday planning in early and we will be doing our boot camp again this year in august even though people think i'm crazy but that's when we'll be doing (laughs) as a side note because we still do the boot camp because it's i think it's good seed planting for getting everything ready and that boot camp was my first introduction to starting not to wing the business yeah I mean, I'm like, oh, wow, that's smart. You sit down and you plan stuff. (laughs) (laughs) But again, that's the business journey, right? Like, it's like, oh, start it with that. And we held your hand and guided you through. And I do remember, it's really funny because you, and then at the end of that, just so if people haven't heard this story before, at the end of that very first boot camp, I was just helping people. I don't know. I was just like, I don't know. Here, I'll, I'll, well, here's what I do and here's what's working. And people were asking me how it was working. We did the boot camp. You actually were the catalyst for me creating the retailers inner circle because you're like, well, now what? Now what are we doing? Where do we all go? How can we all hang out? Like, what, what can you teach us next? So, uh, so Jeff is the catalyst to my retailers inner circle, my monthly coaching group. Which is so. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> then I think other people can thank you too. So thanks so much, Jeff. For I'm gonna put all your information. What's the best way for people to go follow you on Facebook that you don't go on? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, would, would you like us to send people to the website or Facebook or where can people find out more and check out your beautiful shop and really it's beautiful it's such a beautiful shop i'm probably totally facebook is the best place unfortunately we're still working on the website (laughs) it's not unfortunately it is a it's a process (laughs) yeah so (laughs) we'll get there awesome all right we will have all of jeff's contacts thank you jeff so much for being here Um, i appreciate you i appreciate i know my our listeners here on the uh, creative shop talk podcast will be Uh, thrilled to learn about your journey and know that, you know, it's bumpy for everybody. There's always something new to learn. And uh, I'm just grateful for all the insights and all the nuggets that you gave us. I'm going to unpack all this. So thanks so much, Jeff. I appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week, and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. Make sure you join our Rockstar Creatives Facebook group. We will continue the conversation over there weekly. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week. 